before we get started, anyone have a cup of tea? I'm stuck with ice water. Just one of those things today. It's very warm. And I am on eight shots of espresso. Going to go for more as soon as I'm done with this. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Welcome back. I am streaming very early today because we have the plumber coming later, so I didn't want to just leave you all out in the cold and I have plenty of questions waiting. So without further ado, let's get to it. Well, let me set my timer. Right, now let's get to it. Okay, so the first question is actually from several readers. I get this question in waves and the last two readers, hello, <laughs> chat saying hi. Um, the last two readers to send it to me were readers AM and readers DS. So you, you know who you are. And the question is about the Strange Angels series. Yes, my, my forays into YA, I've done two series in YA. There are a lot of other books that I've done with teenage protagonists, young protagonists that are not YA, which is something for another time. So the question is, what is Drew's real name? And what is Drew short for? And the short answer is, I'm going to have to tell you if I ever write the book Swear Graves Comes Back. I did have another trilogy planned with a Maharaj girl, and but various exigencies of publishing got in the way. Uh, publishers don't often like going forward with a series, an, a series extension with a secondary character or a new character, unless the first series has been just a blockbuster hit and then they want to sort of milk that but if you're a, a mid-list author you know the bread and butter type of author which I, I probably am it feels odd to say but unless you have that publishers tend to discourage you from from saying you know I, I planned an extension to this series let's do that and they say no 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 let's do something else so the longer answer is uh at least one reader has already guessed the correct answer to this. They sent me a very lovely letter, and I cannot say who you are, uh, but one reader has already guessed the solution because it is rather simple. But uh, why will I not say? Well, there are some things that remain just between me and the characters. There are some things that I don't want to say until the time is right. There are some things that are private, and there are some things that it just pleases me to keep to myself. So that is the longer answer. If you want to know, so something I should mention about Strange Angels is one of the conventions in the book, one of the, the little world building things is that when a Svetosha is, is cut, when, when their blood hits the, the air, something happens, there's this chemical reaction, and then the happy stuff in it drives the, the boy Dampier around her crazy. Yeah, so I did have a few readers write into me saying, well, what about when Drew's menstruating? What about when she's on a period? And I was like, because I had a whole scene in one of the Strange Angels books. <laughs> Chat says, I love to torture you. I love to torture my readers. I do. I do. I love to torment my readers in the best possible way. But I had a whole scene in one of the Strange Angels books where Nat, the Verwolfen girl, uh, Drew's best friend by the end of the series, uh, is explaining to Drew how this happens and why it's kind of necessary for Drew to use tampons and why Nat has to be there to um, sort of ameliorate what's going on while yeah, while Drew is in the process of changing out certain things. And because Drew was in so much, she was under so much stress and she'd had so much trauma, this didn't really impact the books. And uh, that particular scene that I'm talking about with Nat and Drew talking about, well, this little bit of, you know, if your blood hits the air, that that's going to happen. How do we deal with this thing that, that girls 
do, or, or people born female, I should say, have, um, we ended up cutting that scene. Uh, I say we, but I ended up cutting that scene because there were several other, there were several other considerations. I already knew that I was not going to get what I wanted with certain aspects of publication. And at that point, I was saving up all my goodwill and all my energy to fight about the end of the series. Because as readers will know, the end of the series turned into a knockdown drag out fight with a lot of people pressuring me to have Drew choose a boy, which is just ridiculous. Drew is a teenage girl who has had so much trauma, who has dealt with things no child should, who has had this upbringing that has prepared her for certain parts of real life, but also left her unprepared in others. Drew belongs to herself. She needs to choose herself. And it was very important to me that the series ended with Drew and her best friend, Nat, sitting in the window watching the night come in. This is not about, you know, a teenage girl does not need a boy to make her complete. She is already complete in and of herself. I believe this very strongly. I think it goes without saying. And that is why the series ended the way it did. I did have people writing to me very upset that Drew hadn't chosen a boy, and I thought, well, let's look at her choices. There's Graves, who admits that he is fucked up, and he is not a good person, and he needs to get his, his shit together before he can even think about engaging on that level with somebody else. And then there's Kristoff, who's how much older than she is, and already doesn't really talk to her about things that she needs to know. His frame of reference and hers are so different. Psychological, psychological standards for Dampier notwithstanding, as he would say. Uh, oh, chat, chat's lighting up about this. It says, uh, it is so shocking that people insisted on her choosing someone at the end. I didn't find it shocking because a lot of our, a lot of our media sort of prioritizes that and while these books were coming out when did the first one come out god I can't even remember uh, let's see let's see let's see 2009 so oh god that was so long ago so when these books were coming out Twilight was really big and of course the whole crux of, of Twilight is you know who's Bella going to choose so a lot of readers especially young readers were primed for that sort of thing they were primed to have that be their only frame of reference. But I did not want that for my characters. I didn't want that for Drew. I didn't want that for, I don't want that for any teenage girl. I think it's terrible that we have this, you have to have a man, you know, before you're complete. No, you don't. You really don't. You are complete in and of yourself. And I think the, the sooner a young woman realizes that, the better the rest of her life is. Uh, let's see, chat says they can't accept a happily ever after without a couple. Sometimes, yeah, because that convention is just so strong in our media and in our culture. Look at all of, of our music, you know, the vast, overwhelming majority are love and obsession songs. And there's romance, which I love. I love writing romance. I like providing a happily ever after or a happy for now. I think the majority of my endings in romance tend to be happy for now because I know what happens later. <laughs> uh, somebody else is true. I'd forgotten that that the twilight was the norm back then. It still is pretty much the norm, but this was in, this was a really big thing at the time, uh, especially in YA as chat points out. So I, I got some, I got really hard pushback from the publisher on that. And I really put my foot down this was a hill that I was willing to die on. And I think that shows. I believe in this very strongly. And I fought for the right ending to these books, to that series. So, which may have cost me some readers, because there were some readers who got to the end and they felt betrayed that, that Drew hadn't chosen a boyfriend. Um, but there were other readers. And those I think it's been good to see the shift in 
emails that I get and communication from readers and people saying, you know, these books were a, a part of my younger life and I was angry at the ending, but now I understand what you were trying to do. And every time I get, get a confession, every time I get an email like that, I feel this little internal twinge of, you know, I was right. <laughs> you know, you are the person I wrote for. Thank you. So Drew's real name, simple answer. If I ever write that book, you'll know. The longer answer, I just went through 10 minutes of it. So uh, the next question comes from Reader PC uh, saying, will there be more Kismet books? Takes you back, doesn't it? This old school night shift covers. I really loved this cover design. And this was 2008. So these, these two books, about the same time. So I was writing YA, and I was also writing Jill Kismet. Will there be more Kismet books? I don't think so. There might be short stories about her adventures before the end of the, the last book in that series. Like there was the, the one where she goes up to Seattle to rescue Sloane. And then there was the short story about... Uh, Jack Karma, who was who actually made the deal with Perry way back in in 1930s Berlin or in wartime Berlin, should be like 1940s. Yeah, well, no, he was in Berlin, but Jack Karma actually made the deal with Perry in Dresden. Yes, so there might be short stories, but I don't think I'm going to write another Kismet book because I want I want the last image that we all have of Jill is driving that pickup truck with a hound in the back and her arm over Saul's shoulders. And they're, they're quite literally driving into the sunset. I know what happens afterward and I don't want to write that. Just like the Society series. If I were going to expand the Society series, there would be one character in particular who would have to die and I just, I don't want to write that. I want to leave. Sometimes I, I stop a series at a point of equilibrium because I don't want to go past that. It is an, it's a lovely thing to know what happens next, but it's also kind of a curse. So, and, and here I am talking about the imaginary people in my head again, but you're here, you, you guys seem to like it, so here we are. <laughs> so no, I don't think there will be any more Kismet books. Um, I am surprised, actually, that not a lot of people ask me about the connection between the Hellhound in, in the back and, and Perry, but, but uh, maybe, maybe the readers understand that without me having to say anything. So, <laughs> chat says this is what we come for, is to hear about the, the imaginary people in my head. Well, thank you. You're, you're going to get a full dose of it. Um, so I've been getting a lot of questions about old series and if I plan on expanding them and stuff. And uh, I could move on to the next question. Sh shall I? Let, let me check the timer and see how much longer we have. We have just a little bit. Um, the next question is from Reader AF and it's at hello. I recognize your username. And uh, Rose and Thunder, what a man titty cover, wasn't it? Oh God, yeah. The when Skyla sent me the cover, my my blessed, wonderful cover artist, when she sent me the cover, she was like, "Is it too much?" And I was like, "No, no, of course it's not too much." Acres man titty just everywhere. Yeah, this was a very particular moment in cover art. Somebody says, "If I didn't write, I would have multiple personalities." Well, that that's a story for another time. <laughs> If I didn't write, I probably would not be here right now. But uh, Reader AF said, is there more Rose and Thunder? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Before I would write the extension, which would not be Isabella and Jeremy, it would be elsewhere in that, in that world. Before I wrote that, I would have to write the second Demon's Librarian book. I intended the Demon's Librarian to have a follow-up called The Lawyer and the Demon because um, Chess has Charlie, her sister, who is a, a tort lawyer and who does have a talent for sorcery too. And, you know, 
there's a whole big thing where where Charlie figures out that she does have the the talent for sorcery. Charlie's watering Chess's plants while Chess and Ryan finally go off for a vacation. And then because they've gone off for a vacation, things start to go haywire in the city. So Charlie sort of takes on her sister's mantle. And, uh, and I can't tell you what else happens because that would be giving away the book. But I, I do want to write that. It just, every time I settle to write that, something else comes up. Another revision comes down the, the road or I have to shift to another paying project or there's something else burning a hole in me. So the book is in there. It just is a very polite book and it, it keeps giving its place in the queue to others. And I think part of that is because Charlie as a character is so different from Chess. Chess is, and there goes my timer, so I will finish this thought. And then, so Chess is driven by something different than Charlie is. Chess as a character has this sense of of right and wrong and this, you know, she's out to save the world. Charlie's not out to save the world. Charlie's out to save her people, uh, which is a completely different dynamic. And Charlie also views her job not as an avocation because Chess is a librarian and so to her the work is is kind of holy it's her it is her avocation it's the thing that she wants to do with her life but Charlie views her job as a game that she's very good at and Charlie looks at law as you know how can you argue how can you bend the rules how can you do this how can you use this bending the rules for good she's she's pretty chaotic neutral is Charlie. And of course, there's a Dracul who's, you know, a Draculain, who is just, he's out to save the world. And so that sort of starry-eyed optimist, and then the, the lawyer who's like, no, no, <laughs> we're not going to save the world today. We're just going to save this little piece of it. I really want to explore that dynamic. I just haven't had a chance to yet because all these other books keep keep coming in front of of Charlie's in the queue. And so he says, uh, I love that image of books taking a number. Yes. Yeah. My office is very much like the DMV with stories that you can't see lined up around the door and around the block. And you remember in, uh, oh, what, what was that? Ah, uh, Demi Moore and Patrick Sweet Ghost and Whoopi Goldberg. There's that fantastic scene where Whoopi Goldberg is a medium, her character's a medium, and there are ghosts lined up to leap into her body. <laughs> yeah, chat, chat likes that. Chat finds that amusing. But yeah, I, I am kind of the DMV of stories. I'm like, just take a number, I will get to you when I can. And so they, they come up and they kind of jump in my body for a little bit and tell their story. And then you know, I have to throw them over the fence at the editor just to get them out of the way so that the next story can come in. <sighs> and again, I am streaming really early today because the plumber is on their way. So I need to go and make sure that everything is ready for that. So mm, thank you for coming by. Uh, again, you can submit questions, especially through my Discord server. If you are a subscriber, there's a whole Ask Lily channel. So you can submit questions there on social media, uh, the contact form on my website, uh, in YouTube comments. So there are a number of different avenues for you to ask those burning questions. And I, I may not get around to all of them because there are several I have not answered. But those were the, the three top on the list today. And a lot of people have been writing to me asking about Drew's real name. So I just thought I would just put out the blanket statement now. And so he says, good luck with the plumber. Yes, we'll need it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very hopeful. It, it should only be a small problem. And, and if it, but I have the worst luck with plumbing, pipes and water are just, I feel like a lot of people can say that. So be kind to yourselves. Stay cool out there. We're having some very warm weather in a lot of places. Uh, wash your hands, wear your masks, take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you again soon. All right? Ta-ta.